when radiation interacts with matter it displays particle like properties when this radiation is passed through a prism and then obtained on a photographic plate you obtain emission spectrum so dark lines appear exactly at the same position where the lines in the emission spectra appeared when radiation are propagating or when radiation is moving you can say that it exhibits wave like properties hello everyone this is amli unnikrishnan from the department of chemistry vidyashram school of excellence mysore we discussed about the developments leading to bohr model of atom yes and then we discussed about electromagnetic spectrum and the characteristics of electromagnetic waves then we discussed about the particle nature of matter where we studied about the planck's quantum theory which was able to explain the two effects that we studied photoelectric effect and the black body radiation these two phenomenons also we discussed right in last session so in today's session we'll be discussing on atomic spectra which was the second development which led to the discovery of bohr model of atom right yes and then line spectra and line spectrum of hydrogen which is very important and finally the bohr's model of atom yes so in last session we discussed about the first development which was leading to the bohr model of atom that was dual nature of electromagnetic radiation so we discussed or we understood that the electromagnetic radiation is having particle as well as wave nature so from this what can you conclude is it uh, only particle nature or is it only wave nature or is it both or in which circumstances or in which conditions it acts as particle or it acts as waves so as you can see here when radiation interacts with matter it displays particle like properties so when does your electromagnetic radiation act as particle when it comes or when it interacts with matter yes now when radiation propagates when radiation propagate it exhibits wave like properties yes in the examples of interference and diffraction can be taken in this case right so when radiation are propagating or when radiation is moving you can say that it exhibits wave like properties so i hope it is clear that electromagnetic radiation behaves as particle as well as wave so this is clear now moving on to the second development which was leading to the bohr model of atom that is atomic spectra yes so the word spectrum or spectra might be a little bit familiar for you yes so let us see when a white light is passed through a prism the wave with shorter wavelength bends more than with a longer wavelength so what exactly is happening in atomic spectra or how do you obtain a spectrum yes when white light is passed through a prism you know that you obtain these seven colors that is vibrio right so your white light consists of vidgeor this is already a known fact for you right so when we pass white light through prism it splits into the vidgeor so as you can see here the shorter wavelength one bends more than the longer wavelength one so as you can see here when white light is passed through the prism it splits into the seven different colors and the red one is the least deviated because it is having the highest wavelength yes so highest wavelength means red color will be having the lowest frequency right yes so the red color will be the deviated the least right and the last one that is violet it will be having the wavelength which is least that means frequency is the highest and it is deviated the most right so that is what is written here the red color having longest wavelength is deviated the least so that is why it is on the top right it is deviated the least and as you can see the violet color is deviated the most right so violet light having the shortest wavelength is deviated the most so what are you able to observe here yes there is a continuous spectrum that is obtained when you pass white light through a prism yes i we understood that when we pass white light through a prism we obtain the vibrior yes and the vibrior or the spectrum that we obtain is a continuous spectrum see you obtain a spectrum like this each color merges onto the 
upcoming or the next color you obtain a continuous spectrum wherein which there will be no separation see as the violet ends the indigo starts right you are not able to see any separation between these colors there a continuous spectrum is obtained yes so this is what is continuous spectrum when white light is passed through prism it splits into seven different colors red to violet and these colors are continuous that each of them merges into the next right as you can see there are no different separations or you can't say that the violet ends here and the indigo starts here right it is a continuous spectrum that is obtained clear now moving on to the next type of spectrum that is emission spectrum now what is emission spectrum when radiation emitted from a source are passed through a prism and then received on a photographic plate you obtain emission spectrum so what does the sentence mean let us try to understand okay so let's take an example of any atom so it is easy to consider hydrogen atom so let's consider that we know that there is a positively charged nucleus right okay so in the case of hydrogen atom we know that only one electron is present and it is present in this shell let us say right yes so only one electron is present so what happens is the electron absorbs the energy which is given on to the atom and it moves to excited energy states what happens is from this energy state it moves to the higher energy states so these higher levels or higher energy states are called as excited states right and from the energy level from which it has jumped to higher energy level that is this one it is called as the ground state okay so what can you say when energy is supplied to the hydrogen atom the electron accepts this energy yes now the electron is having some energy with it no so it gets excited and it moves to the higher energy level or the excited states now what you have to understand is in the excited state it is unstable yes the electrons can't stay in the excited state for a long time it is an unstable state so what happens the electron from the excited state it will come back to the initial state or the ground state so let us say the electron from this energy level absorbed energy and moved to this higher energy state so as i said it is unstable so it can't the electron can't remain in the excited state for a long period of time so it comes back to the ground state right so when from a higher energy level the electron is coming to the lower energy level it emits radiations clear it emits radiations so when this radiations is passed through a prism and then obtained on a photographic plate you obtain emission spectrum clear yes so this emission spectrum is as you can see here it will be obtained on a photographic plate that will be a black background on which you will obtain the colored lines you can see here so these lines these colored lines that you can see corresponds to the wavelength which has emitted radiations right this corresponds to the wavelength in which the radiations are being emitted clear so the black background where in which you get the uh, colored lines are the wavelengths which has emitted radiation so this is about emission spectrum clear so now about absorption spectrum so you can basically say that absorption spectrum is the opposite of emission spectrum so what does that mean from the name itself you can say absorption spectrum so it is basically the wavelengths in which or the spectral lines that you obtain in those areas where the radiations are being absorbed right so when light is passed through vapors of a substance and transmitted light is then allowed to strike a prism dark lines appear on the continuous spectrum the dark line indicates the radiation that are being absorbed so dark lines appear exactly at the same position where the lines in the emission spectra appeared clear so this is what i was telling it is kind of exactly opposite to the emission spectrum so as you can see this is emission spectrum we studied now this diagram that you can see this is the absorption spectrum clear we have studied about continuous spectrum right so on a continuous spectrum band you will be able to observe this dark lines see you can see black lines there right so these are the wavelengths in which the radiations are being absorbed so as you can see the line is here and in the emission spectrum the line is here so exactly on the same position the lines will be observed so basically you can say that these are opposite to each other 
right so in an absorption spectrum on a continuous spectrum dark lines are observed so this is about continuous spectrum emission spectrum and absorption spectrum clear so in emission and absorption spectrum as you can see lines appear on the photographic plate right so these lines what is the importance of this lines or line spectrum so let us see the emission spectrum of atoms in the gas phase only emits light in specific wavelengths with dark spaces between them we observed this in absorption and emission spectrum right so what exactly is the importance of this line spectra that we observed in emission and absorption spectra so as you can see every element has unique line emission spectra and many elements were discovered using line emission spectra so that is actually the importance of line spectra yes so many elements were discovered using the line spectrum of those particular elements and each of the elements are having a unique line spectra clear so in detail we are going to study about the line spectrum of hydrogen which is very very important okay so hydrogen as it is the simplest element which is consisting of only one electron it is easy to understand the line spectrum of hydrogen so we'll be going to discuss about it so how exactly do you obtain the line spectrum of hydrogen yes let's begin with that so as you can see here there is a gas discharge tube there is a discharge tube yes there will be an anode and cathode under low pressure and high voltage there a gas will be present okay so when high voltage is passed through it what happens energy is given to the hydrogen gas so inside this discharge tube hydrogen gas is present yes so when we discussed about emission spectra we what did we discuss when the electron gets energy it jumps to higher energy state right so when uh, inside this discharge tube when a high voltage is supplied to the gas what happens energy is obtained by the electrons right the atom gets energy or your hydrogen uh, gas absorbs energy what happens the as you know there will be a nucleus and there are different shells present right so what happens the electron absorbs energy and moves to higher energy states the excited states as said they, the excited states are unstable so the electrons comes back to the ground state so when coming back what did we study it emits radiations right so this emitted light is then passed through a prism see from excited state when it comes to the lower or ground state what happens the radiation or the light which is emitted is passed through the prism right and then as we know that when it passes through the prism it deviates and that is obtained on a photographic plate the lines which is coming out of the prism is obtained on a photographic plate yes so the beauty of the line spectrum of hydrogen is that you obtain different series of lines clear so what is this different series of lines let us understand so basically you are going to study about five different series of line spectrum of hydrogen which are named under the uh, scientists who discovered them so as you can see lyman series balma series paschkin series bracket series and fund series the p is silent here it is fund series so what is about this different series of lines or different spectral lines that you can observe so as said from the higher energy levels when it comes to when the electron moves back or jumps back to the lower energy levels it emits radiations which is caught on this photographic plate so that will be uh, observed as a set of different series of lines so let us say in a photographic plate we obtain this uh, radiations what happens here you can see a set of lines again here a series of lines again here a series of lines so that is basically what i have shown here so how exactly it is obtained let us see so the same diagram we can use there is a positively charged nucleus and there are different shells present so first let us discuss about the lyman series how lyman series is obtained okay yes so there is a nucleus there are different shells present okay let us consider this okay now there is an electron here it jumped to this energy level now there the electron is coming back to the ground state so let's say the first one is n is equal to 1 the first energy state this is 2 this is 3 and this is 4 okay so there is a possibility that the electron can jump from the 
fourth energy state to the first one right yes now from let's say the from the fourth energy state the electron is moving to third and then coming back to one that is also possible right so it can come from third to one right it can also come from two to one right so in this way electrons can jump from each of the excited higher excited states to the ground state so what you have to understand is from all the higher energy states the electron is finally coming to the first uh, energy state or the ground state right so those series that are obtained from any higher en when the electron jumps from any higher energy state to the first energy state which is n is equal to 1 comes under the lyman series so as you can see here from n is equal to infinity the highest energy state it is coming to or the electron is jumping back to the first energy level right from 7 it is coming to 1 6 to 1 5 to 1 4 to 1 yes so from whichever higher energy state finally when it is uh, falling back to the first energy level the series of line that is obtained comes under the Lyman series okay so this corresponds to or this comes under the ultraviolet region okay so that is also important now next moving on to balmer series yes so as you can see here it corresponds to n is equal to 2 that means in the same diagram as you can see from any higher energy level i have only drawn till 4 there can be 5 6 7 till infinity right so from any higher energy level when the electron falls back to n is equal to 2 from here it can fall back to 2 from higher energy states it can fall back to 2 right yes so from wherever from whichever higher energy state it falls back to to the series of lines that are obtained comes under Balmer series. Yes, that comes under the visible region. Okay, so Lyman series comes under ultraviolet and Balmer series is visible region. Okay, now moving on to Pashkin as explained in Lyman and Balmer from any higher energy state it moves or it jumps back to the n is equal to 3, the third energy state clear so for pashkin it comes under the infrared region so what you have to remember is lyman is uv balma visible and pashkin bracken and fund comes under infrared region clear now coming to bracket uh, series from any higher energy level it moves back or it jumps back the electron when it jumps back to n is equal to 4 the fourth energy state yes the series obtained comes under bracket series now for fund the same way from any higher energy state coming back to n is equal to 5. So, the series of lines. So, from any level when it is falling back to n is equal to 1, the first energy state or the ground state, the corresponding see many lines will be obtained. Like this group of lines is called as Lyman series, Balma, Pashkin, Bracket and Fund. Clear? So, I hope the line spectrum of hydrogen is clear. The diagram that is shown here, it is clear for you. Now, moving on to, yes. Lyman series n1 is equal to 1 and n2 is equal to 2, 3, 4, etc. So that means finally where it is coming back to it is 1, right? Yes, and from any higher energy state it can fall back to 1. So that corresponds to n2 is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5. Any value can come up. Yes, and falls under UV region. Balma, uh, Balma series n1 is equal to 2 falls back to 2 and from any higher energy state comes under visible region. Now, Pashkin series N1 is equal to 3, N2 can be 4, 5, 6, etc. It comes under IR region. Bracket series N1 is equal to 4 and N2 is 5, 6, 7, etc. Comes under IR region. And fun series N1 is equal to 5 and N2 can be 6, 7, 8, any values. IR comes under infrared region. So, I hope it is clear. Now, to calculate the wavelength associated with each of the spectral lines, Rydberg formulated an equation from which you can calculate the wavelength of each of the spectral lines. Right. So, Rydberg in 1890 gave an expression for the calculation of wavelength of spectral lines in different series of hydrogen spectra. So, we have studied about the hydrogen spectra, the line spectrum of hydrogen. So, each of the series corresponds to some wavelength. Right. So, what we studied about emission spectrum or absorption spectrum or whichever spectrum we studied, 
in certain wavelengths this is happening so we studied about the line spectrum but which it corresponds to which wavelength exactly so for calculating that redberg formulated this equation as you can see here nu bar what is nu bar it is wave number right so nu bar is equal to rh into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square clear so nu bar is wave number which is equal to 1 by lambda right nu bar is equal to 1 by lambda we already know that so from here once you calculate this value we, if you take the inverse you will obtain the value for wavelength right so nu bar is equal to rh into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square so what is rh rh is Rydberg's constant having a value 109677 centimeter inverse clear so what is this n1 and n2 corresponding to so just this slide we saw that see in Lyman series n1 will be 1 clear so if we are talking about Lyman series if you have to calculate the wavelength associated with Lyman series n1 should be 1 so what about n2 it can be 2 3 4 etc any value right so from which energy state it is falling to n is equal to 1 that corresponding value you have to uh, substitute in n2 clear yes so let's do a problem based on this what is the maximum number of spectral lines that can be observed when the excited electron of hydrogen atom in n is equal to 6 drops to the ground state so from n is equal to 6 yes from where it is falling the higher energy state is given n is equal to 6 to the ground state so it is falling back to n is equal to 1 how many spectral lines are obtained that is what we have to calculate so let's see Okay, so this corresponds to n is equal to 6, n is equal to 5, n is equal to 4, n is equal to 3, n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 1. So, from the question, you know that from n is equal to 6, it is falling back to 1. Alright, so it can fall back to 1. Electron is falling back to 1. Okay, now it can fall back from 5 as well, right? From 6, it is going to 5 first. And from 5, it is coming back to 1. That is also possible. Yes, from 6, it is coming to 4, then coming to 1. That is also possible. Right. So, basically, you can obtain a set of series like this. So, is this the only possible thing? So, what I am trying to say is, from n is equal to 6, it can come to 5, then come to 4, then come to 3, then to 2, then to 1. That is also possible. So, I can say that from it can come from 6 to 5 right 6 to 4 6 to 3 6 to 2 and 6 to 1 okay so 6 to 5 now from 5 it uh, another possibility that are there from 5 it can come to 4 3 2 and 1 right so from 5 to 4 5 to 3 5 to 2 and 5 to 1 right now same way from 4 to 3 4 to 2 4 to 1 yes 3 to 2 and 3 to 1, finally 2 to 1 is also possible, right? These many spectral lines are possible when the electron is falling back from n is equal to 6 to n is equal to 1. So, as you can see, you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 spectral lines can be obtained. Clear? So, this is kind of easy to calculate, but in all the cases, the number of spectral lines can't be calculated in this form. You can't count it. So, the general formula that you can use is n into n minus 1 by 2. So, n corresponds to from which energy state the electron is falling back. So, if you are taking the question into this equation, n is equal to 6 we know. So, what it will be? 6 into 6 minus 1 by 2, that is 6 into 5 by 2, that is 30 by 2 which will give you 15, yes, 15 spectral lines. So, this equation also you can use in these types of equations. So, I hope the line spectrum of hydrogen is clear. Yes, now moving on to the Bohr's model of atom. So, till now we discussed about the developments which we are reading to the Bohr's model of atom, right? So, from these experiments or these developments that we studied, that is dual nature of electromagnetic radiation and atomic spectra, Bohr was able to formulate his Bohr's model of atom. Yes, so Niel Bohr in 1913 proposed a new model of atom on basis of Planck's quantum theory. 
So we will study about the postulates. So what exactly is Bohr's model of atom? We are going to see. So in an atom, the electrons revolve around the nucleus in certain definite circular paths called as orbits. Right? There will be a nucleus and there are different circular paths you can see in which the electrons are revolving around the nucleus and the name of each of this energy states are called as orbits. Right? This was the first one. And each orbit is associated with definite energy and therefore these are known as energy levels or energy shells and these are numbered as 1, 2, 3 or KLM. So as you can see, there are different orbits in which electrons are revolving around the nucleus. So each of these orbits, you can see this orbit, this orbit, this orbit, each of the circular paths has a definite energy. Yes? That is what is written here. Each orbit is associated with a definite energy. Each of these energy levels are having a corresponding energy. Hence, you can also call it as energy levels or energy shells. And it is represented by 1, 2, 3 or else you can also represent it as KLM like that. KLMN. You can represent it like that or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 like that. You can represent the each orbit or each energy levels or each energy shells. Clear? Now, as long as electron is present in a particular orbit, it neither absorbs nor loses energy and its energy therefore remains constant. So, as discussed, there are different shells present. Yes, when the electron, let's say, only one electron is present, when the electron is present in that particular orbit or that particular energy level, there is no absorption or release or emission of energy that is taking place, right? As long as the electron is present in that particular energy level, there will be no em emission or absorption of energy. But when it moves from one energy level to higher energy level or when it moves back from higher energy level to lower energy level, there will be a change in energy or there will be an emission or absorption taking place. That means a change in energy will take place. So as long as it is present in one particular orbit, it is not moving anywhere, no energy change will take place and the energy will remain a constant therefore. Clear? Now, the frequency of radiation absorbed or emitted when transition occurs between two stationary states that differ in energy is given by this equation. Yes, so as I said, when it is present in one uh, particular orbit, no change is happening. But when it is moving from, let us say, the electron absorbs energy and it is moving to higher energy state. So what is happening? Energy is being absorbed there, right? And when from the final energy state, it is coming back to the ground state. Excited state, it is coming back, it emits radiations, right? So, there is basically a change in energy that is taking place, right? So, the change in energy is represented by delta E and associated when the, uh, the associated frequency, as you can see here, when it is coming down to the ground state, energy is, radiations are emitted. So, the frequency associated with it can be calculated by the equation nu is equal to delta E by H. So, what is this delta E? It is the difference between these energy levels, right? So, you can also write it as delta E by H. You can also write it as E2 minus E1 by H, right? So, E2 is the final state in which the electron has reached and E1 is initially from where it has jumped. Clear? So, that is delta E by H which will give you the frequency associated with the radiation that is being emitted or absorbed. Clear? Now, the angular momentum of an electron in a given stationary state can be expressed using this equation. So, what you have to understand is these orbits, uh, the electrons can't revolve around any orbit that is possible. So, the orbits in which the electrons will revolve is basically those orbits whose angular momentum is an integral multiple of h by 2 pi. So, that is the equation that is given. Angular momentum, you know that it is mvr. So, E is written as subscript here that it's mass of electron, velocity and the radius. So, angular momentum must be an integral multiple of h by 2 pi. So, you can write it as mvr is equal to nh by 2 pi. So, this n value must be an integer. So, what is that you have to conclude or understand from the statement is that any orbital, electron can't uh, revolve around the nucleus in any orbital that is possible. The angular momentum of this orbital must be an integral multiple of nh by 2 pi or it must be an integral multiple of h by 2 pi. Clear? The n value can be 1, 2, 3, etc. Integer values. Clear? 
Now, when energy is supplied to an electron, it absorbs energy only in fixed amounts and jumps to higher energy state. The excited state is unstable and electron may jump back to lower energy state. This we have already discussed till now. Clear? So, I hope the postulates that was uh, formulated or postulates which were given by Bohr's model uh, of atom is clear for you. So, in the next session, we will be studying about the Bohr's theory of hydrogen atom in detail in which you, we will be studying about the various equations for finding out the energy, radius, etc. of different orbits. In detail, we will be studying about certain equations which is of importance for your examination. Clear? So, in the next session, we will be studying about that and then line spectrum of hydrogen. So, line spectrum of hydrogen we have already studied, right? So, how exactly using the Bohr's theory for hydrogen atom, we will be able to explain the line spectrum of hydrogen we will be studying and then towards the quantum mechanical model which were the developments which eventually led to the quantum mechanical model of atom even that we will be discussing in the next session. So what and all we have discussed in this session is clear for you. I hope that it is clear for you. So that's all for today. Thank you.